happy Tuesday. This is episode 16 of Lessons and Legacies. I am your host, Melissa Price, and I'm very honored and grateful to welcome my two special guests to the show today, Charlotte Price and Sophie Price. These are my amazing little angels, my daughters, and uh, my little kidpreneurs. And since we are wrapping up this year, 2020, we're going to share a little bit about the lessons we've learned, and uh, then I'm going to let them head out and get back to their doll play, and I'm going to read a little bit from the book for you guys. So um, anyway, so 2020 has been kind of a crazy year, hasn't it? Yeah? You think it's been crazy like this, crazy like that, or crazy like that? Uh... What do you think? Eh? Yeah, all, right. all right. So diagonal. diagonal, like a little bit more to the positive. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like that. Optimism is a good thing. Positivity is a great thing. Look, we have people joining us. Say hey to Yvette. Hi, Yvette. Hi, Yvette. She hi, says, Yvette. hi, kids. Happy holidays. Very good. Thanks for joining us, Yvette. Um, so what was one of the tough lessons that you learned this year? What was something kind of tough that you learned? Who wants um, to go first? I will. Oh, right. she had her hand up. Let's have, you got to speak up so they can hear All you. All right. Well, my toughest lesson that I had to learn was probably doing the face mask. I had to learn how to handle that. And it was pretty frustrating. Yeah. What's, where's your least favorite place to have to wear the, the face masks? Probably like in public places like Harris Teeter when we have to stay there for a while because it's because your face gets all hot and you want to take it off. Yes, I agree. The face mask thing was a really difficult thing for me to learn this year too, especially when I have to go to the grocery store and it takes me like 45 minutes to do the shopping. Sometimes longer because, you know, we got to all stay spaced out and all that. And I'll tell you what, those masks make my nose itch like crazy. All I do the whole time, I'm... So I agree. That was a difficult lesson. What about you? Did you? What was something tough you learned this year? It was something. It was like I had to stay home and inside all the time. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't have a lot of people come over. So you miss your friends and your yeah. family. You miss the visiting, huh? Mm -hmm. That is. Oh, look who's on. Hi, Who is it? Precious, Hi, precious. Say hey, Auntie P. Hi, Auntie P. Hi, Auntie P. Hi, Auntie P. Thanks for joining us. We are um, sharing our lessons of 2020, and uh, so we're, we're going through difficult ones. What, what was some of the tough stuff we had to get used to and deal with through this year? And then we're going to talk about some positives, too. Um, so if you guys have any difficult stuff you went through this year or had to adjust to this year, pop it in the comments so we can all share. So, uh, all right, something difficult I learned this year. I had to learn... Okay, this was difficult for me, and I actually, I, I had some tears about it, and I learned my greatest, one of my greatest lessons through you guys this year. I had to learn, don't do that, don't, don't. I had to learn how to receive, and although that sounds like a funny lesson to have, to have to learn, it was a difficult one for me, and it really became apparent and obvious to me that it was an issue when you in the back seat of the car while we were at the Starbucks spending our Christmas gift card, um, said, I want to spend my money on you and get you something for Christmas. Do you remember what I told you in the car? Yeah. What did I say? Don't buy me anything. Save your money for yourself. Right. How did it make you feel? It made me feel upset because I want it. I like buying people things. How does it make you feel when you give? Good. Really good. Good. It makes right. Me smile. Mm -hmm. And so, through Miss Precious Pauling and my mom, your grandma Nay, and and just kind of talking about it with our friends that are watching and stuff, I learned that when I said save your money for yourself, I was blo I was blocking you. I was blocking you from the joy of giving. Stop trying to block her out. You're blocking her now. Um, but yeah, I was robbing you of the joy of giving. So it is important to receive so that, you know, we keep the love and the joy and the flow of things going. That was a difficult lesson for me to learn this year. 
So how about positive lessons? What was something really good that you learned, a strong, super positive lesson that you learned this year? I learned that we were Speak getting, up. I learned that we were getting into state phase three. That made me way happier because we get to like hang out with a few more people and stuff. That's a good thing. So you, yeah, I get that. So, and you've gotten used to the mask thing. So that's good also. But yeah, we've had to adjust. We've had to learn how to socialize a little bit differently, you know? What about you? Did you have something positive that you learned this year? Ooh. Yes. What? When I was inside during coronavirus, how you said, remember how I said I didn't like it? Parts of it, I liked it because someone like, a friend or people that we haven't seen in a while could come over. You miss people, huh? Yeah. Well, I could think of a positive lesson that you both learned this year. You guys both learned how to make an e-commerce store. You started your own business this year, so you got lessons in kidpreneuring, didn't you? What's the name of your store? What did you guys come tease, up with? Totes and very special notes. No. no just tease, totes and notes dot com. Say it again. Tease, totes, and notes dot company dot site. That's right. They came up with their very own business that kind of evolved from all of the sewing lessons they've been doing with grandma every week. And so they have come up with amazing totes, like t-shirt totes and tank top totes that you sling over your back. There's awesome drink bottle totes and wine totes and um, they have greeting cards and stuff up there that they designed all by themselves. You have the new fanny pack, which we call bottom bags. So you guys, that was a really cool lesson and you guys have been working it. We've done a lot of sales for them this year and uh, they still are making products. So you guys will have to check that out. We'll pop that in the comments below. Tease totes and notes dot company dot site. And uh, let's see, I learned one of my good lessons this year is that where there's a will, there is a way. Uh, Brittany's saying, hey, say hey, Brittany Thomas. Hi, Miss Brittany Thomas. Hi. And she says, good job. You guys are doing yeah, a good yeah. job. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I missed Yvette. Here, listen, yeah. this is what Yvette says. She says, when I go out, I have to wear my mask at all times and shopping to be six feet, six feet apart. I hope this coronavirus will go away to be back to normal life. Yes, I agree. We, well, we, we learned a lot of good things along the way too, though, you know? Um, and you, they, she said, great job on doing your business. You should be very proud of that. Thank you. So I learned that where there's a will, there's a way, you know? During all this, we've had to adjust to some pretty funky stuff. But you know what? Uh, yeah. We're pretty resilient. We find our way through these things, don't we? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's that's important because we don't fail as long as we keep moving. The only time we fail is if we quit and we stay stuck. So for us to go outside of the box and find ways to adapt and evolve in our circumstances is a good thing, don't you think? Uh -huh. All right. Well, do you guys want to hang out or do you want to go back to your thing? You look like you're ready to go back to playing. Hang out for a couple more minutes. Okay. okay. All right. Well, whenever you're ready, you can just peace wait, out. Wait. And wait. I'm going to continue on. Wait. I'm touching this side of my head, not this side. I know. It's because it's flipped. It's a camera. This it messes is so with you, huh? so weird. Yeah. When I lean this way, I'm leaning the wrong way. I when know. I lean that way, I'm leaning. You have to do everything backwards when you're on the camera. It's kind of fun. I it? hate being on Facebook when it's... Like, it looks like I'm using my right hand, but this is my left hand. I know it. Wait, I can write with my right left hand. I can write. You're just like all wobbling can, all over the place. I can Whoa. write with my do all right. dominant hand. Very good. Oh. All right. Well, listen, you guys go on, get back to your dolling, and I'm going to do some reading here for the folks. Why can't we listen? You can if you want, but right. I want you to sit still and, and not do that, okay? All right, so uh, something I wanted to talk about, my one of my greatest lessons in 2020 um, actually became very apparent this morning while I was on another friend's show. I was on a, for the first time ever, a 12 panel, 12 person live stream this morning, and that was super cool. It was 
such an awesome experience and uh, something really beautiful came out of that to me. I um, learned multiple things. Yeah, Brittany says, I learned multiple ways to make money. That's right. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? Um, but yeah, so we were on the show this morning and it was uh, Disconnect to Connect, One Word Conversations with William Brown. And he had invited many of his guests over the last 250 episodes to come on back and kind of wrap up 2020. 250? And, uh, yes. That's yes. almost 300. I know. I think he's going to, he's probably going to, yeah, he would have, he would probably would be coming close to 300 by the end of the year here. But um, anyways, mm. sidetracking me here. Yvette said, me too, queen. Me too, queen. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, anyway, so we came on to, everybody got a chance to talk about the one word that they had. And also we got to talk about how the show impacted us and being part of it and whatnot. And it was really, really something special. I'll tell you what, um, I guess one of the greatest lessons I learned this year, thanks to Bill and all of the episodes that he's put out there is how important it is for us to choose our words wisely and how important it is to listen to people and what they're really saying to you. Um, through that show, if you ever get a chance, please look him up with William Brown. You can look up William Brown on Facebook or um, Disconnect to Connect, One Word Conversations. It's on YouTube as well. And you can even see it, check out our episode from today if you want. Uh, I was on there, Precious was on there, Dr. Deborah was on there. Um, several people you guys see joining in on the show popped in today, so that was really cool. And um, yeah, it was just really, really amazing. Um, my favorite part was when everybody got to leave their lasting impressions and uh, talk about how the show has made a difference in their world. And I think, like I said, for me, it shows up daily. I'm more mindful now of what I'm saying. There are so many words out there that have multiple definitions, you know, many definitions. And it just depends on who is speaking it. Who's saying it? Who's sharing it? Because what the word um, close, close to me could be close to you. That was one of the words that popped up on, on our discussion today. Close versus close, you know? So it's just, it's taught me the importance of choosing our words um, and really being clear about what we're saying. You know, we carelessly throw words around like nothing sometimes and uh, really don't realize what we're saying. So I think... Um, it was a great lesson I learned this year, and it's something I'm really going to focus on and embody and also teach onward to my children in 2021. Excuse yes, me. you go first. Your hand was up first. Go. Sorry. Um, Is Brittany the younger one or the older one? Brittany Thomas. The, is the one that does the beads? Yes, Brittany's beads. Yep, Brittany's beads and books. And what was your question? Um, where does Mr. Yvette live? It's Miss Yvette. Miss Yvette. Where are you at, Yvette? I always want to say New York, and I, I know it's wrong all the time. Tennessee or something? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, right? Pittsburgh. Something like that. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, maybe? I don't know. Put it in there. The girls want to know where you live, and I forgot. <laughs> oh, Brittany. Oh, it's, it's okay. You're good. Um, yeah, so with that in mind... Um, what I want to do is read a little bit from my book and I've selected a few pieces that really I think are centered around how we speak to one another and the words chosen. So I invite you to listen in, enjoy. I hope this brings some perspective and positivity to your day. Um, this is my brand new book, Lessons We've Learned, Legacies of Life. You can find it at lessonsandlegacies.company.site. I will put that in the com or the uh, I will put it in the comments below after. But um, where is it? I'll there we go. Right back, guys. There we go. Lessonsandlegacies.company.site. That's where you can order your own copy. It's available in three different formats. The first one is color. That is twenty-five dollars. There's lots of beautiful pictures and art. Can I try to find one more? Um. And then there is black and white, which is 20. And then there is a digital download copy, which is only $9.99. So 
take a look around the store. We've got lots of art and greeting cards and essential oils, books by myself and several other wonderful individuals. So. Mommy, I have a question. Yes, and then What's I'm going to ask you guys to go while I What's read. What's digital now? That means it's an online book. Oh, so you can like buy the online books and read it on your own time? You read it on your tablet, yeah, or your computer or something, or your phone, yep. What? Um, Missy Vat, um, if you didn't leave, no, you didn't leave, um, will you please comment down below before we leave really quickly where you live? They want to know where you live, Yvette. Um, and when she answers, I'll let you know. So anyways, let's get started. I'm going to start reading. You guys give me a little bit of space here to finish this up, and then we'll go take the dog for a walk and Yay! enjoy some of the sunshine that we got out there, right? Can I play outside? Stay in the front yard. Shut the door. Thank you. Oh, Boston, Massachusetts. That's where she lives. Where's Boston? Massachusetts. Oh, I so <laughs> said, where's Boston? Massachusetts. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for being such wonderful, wonderful friends to my little ones there. I appreciate it. They like coming on and doing this with me sometimes. And I enjoy having them. Got to teach them, right? All right. So the first story I'm going to read to you guys. And again, this is all kind of, I really want you to be mindful as I read these things about the wording the opportunities in each of these um, stories to use the correct words. And if we were to have chosen different words to use, would it have worked out the same, you know? Um, the first story is called A Child's Heart, and that's written by my mother, Renee Bodell. She had, she's currently battling snow and ice and frigid temperatures in Detroit, Michigan. I am uh, grateful I am not. <laughs> We've got some warm North Carolina sun on us today, and boy, am I happy for that. <laughs> you bet. Massachusetts, way out from you guys. I know you're probably battling the same frigid temperatures and the same ice and snow as my mother, aren't you? <laughs> I think it's probably like 55, 60, something like that out there today where we're at. But, all right, a child's heart is all about the importance of how we speak to one another, what we say to one another, and being mindful of the opportunities to do so. While visiting, and she wrote this, by the way, about Sophie. That was my little one that was over on this side here. <laughs> I still have to get used to the camera thing too. All right, while visiting my six-year-old granddaughter one day, we decided to cozy up on the couch and watch a movie together. Well, what do you want to watch, Grandma? She asked. I chuckled to myself and replied, how about Friday the 13th? She looked at me with confusion as I proceeded to tell her that I was just kidding. I allowed her to decide what cinematic adventure we would embark on and she chose Vampirina. Vampirina is a cartoon about a young purple vampire and her family living in the human realm. Personally, I found that to be equally as disturbing as my movie choice. <laughs> As we sat on the couch, I stared blankly at the TV, planning out tomorrow's to-do list and hoping for an episode of Ellen to be on next. Suddenly, she tapped me on the shoulder, waking me from my catatonic state. What is heaven like, Grandma? Opportunity, right? She, she asked. I wondered to myself, how could a child be so profound in questioning one of the greatest mysteries that we have all pondered? I shook my head and I brought myself fully into the moment, turned the TV off and turned her on. Little one, I replied, grandma believes that heaven is the greatest gift from God that we could ever imagine. It's just for his special children. To some people, it is being reunited with family and friends and being able to live eternally with them in peace and love. To others, heaven might look like a tropical vacation with lots of delicious foods and drinks and fun and never having to work. For me, heaven is a place where I will get to see all of the animals and pets that I have loved over the years. They would all be in an endless field of daisies, loving me in a place where it is always warm and sunny. 
She sat there silently for a moment, taking it all in. I took this precious opportunity to learn more about my curious granddaughter. Okay, little one, it's your turn. What do you wanna see when you go to heaven? After another pause, she looked up at me with her innocent blue eyes and said, Grandma, I just wanna see Jesus when I go to heaven. I have never been as touched as I was in that moment to see the pure, undistracted love my granddaughter had for Jesus filled me with more awe and wonder than I can ever express. In the Bible, Jesus says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. On that day, my little one delivered the lesson of where my heart should always be. The love for Jesus is the key, not only to heaven, but to all things. So I like this because there were two opportunities there. The first one was when my mom turned off the TV and heard, you know, she heard there was an opportunity there when Sophie asked her, what has happened like? And she chose, you know, she could have just stuck with one thing or what she thought, but she chose, I thought, great words. She explained that, you know, it, it might be different for everybody. It's what's in your heart kind of thing. And therefore, let her have an opportunity to kind of come up with it herself, you know, develop her own ideals of, of heaven, her own visuals. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then the second opportunity was when she returned the opportunity or the question, I guess, to Sophie, you know, she could have ended the conversation there, which is answering her, but she chose to then ask the same question return and then hear, you know, and because that happened, because that conversation was exchanged, it was a blessed moment for both of them. Not only was Sophie left like feeling full and heard and seen um, and embraced, but my mom was left like flabbergasted, first of all, that, you know, coming from a six year old at the time, um, she was being asked such things, but uh, it left her with this beautiful love in her heart and a glow about her as well. So yeah, there was many chances for that conversation to die out early, but because it transpired, it, it became something absolutely beautiful and necessary. And every time I reread this, I can remember the moment pretty, 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 I, exactly, I guess. Oh, I'm stumbling over my words today. <laughs> it's been a long day. I've had a lot of online time today, more than I'm used to. So, <laughs> so forgive my sips too. It does dry the, the throat out after a bit. So the next one that I wanted to read was a piece by my friend, Danny Murphy. He is in Maryland and um, it's called Mrs. Doris. Let's see, page 16 out of lessons we've learned, legacies of life. Here's some of Dan Danny actually did all the photography in my book. Here's a couple of his pictures there. He has such amazing art and uh, photography himself and he writes so this is one of his stories again um i'm choosing to read things that i think show how important it is to mind what we say and be very intentional about the words we choose to use so this is another one kind of like the last story that uh I said opportunities yvette says i don't like freddy cougar and the vampire, they scare me, LOL. I watched it on TV sometimes, Queen. <laughs> That's funny, you've seen the Vampirina before? They, they've outgrown that, that was a big one for them a couple years ago, but uh, they've outgrown that since. But I thought it was cute, I liked the Vampirina. Thank you so much, Yvette, thank you. All right, this is Mrs. Doris, page 16 of Lessons We've Learned, Legacies of Life, and by Danny Murphy. The number one thing that I have come to learn in this life is that love is everything. 
We should never waste time on hating someone for any reason. Everything happens for a reason, and I believe God has a bigger calling for us than we can even imagine. I have fallen off a roof, been crushed by a crane, crashed a vehicle at 95 miles per hour, and almost bled to death during surgery. My father shot at my head and missed by two inches. My little brother stabbed me in the arm, and I've survived cancer. Multiple times, by the way. There isn't anyone out there that can't tell me there's no good in life because I have survived it all. I hope I can handle the job that he has for me after making it through all of these things. I have my down days, but I'm not going to hurt myself, which was a thought at times in the past. I love me. I talk to people and listen to their stories. I pray for them. I go to church and I love it. Every one of us is the same and that our blood is the same color. I don't let things bother me and I leave it in God's hands. I make chess boards and I hand carve roses from wood. Right now, that's his plan for me. I remember going through radiation when I had cancer and talking to a woman named Mrs. Doris. When I mentioned the type of cancer I had, she knew it was curable and offered up praise to the Lord on my behalf. When I inquired about the type of cancer she had, she told me it had already spread throughout her, but she was not done fighting. That night when I went home, I felt a heaviness in my heart. When I saw Mrs. Doris the next day, I said, you know, I'm happy about my cancer being treatable, but I feel so sad because yours is spreading. In that moment, she grabbed my hand and said, don't let God hear you, be glad. He's training you for a bigger calling. She continued on by reciting a few scripture verses and then assured me that she was ready to go and would be okay. God would take care of her. For a while after that, she called me every day asking, Danny, did you pray today? Always remember to put God first. Then one day she stopped her treatment. Her final act of love towards me was a phone call the day before she passed. She softly said, it's time. I won't call you tomorrow, but I will just, just know that I will be watching over you. Of course I burst into tears and immediately she said, Stop that. Be happy for me. I won't be in pain anymore. I took a deep breath and dried my eyes. And with that, we said goodbye. When we love people, we eventually have to let them go. Never take for granted the time that you have to plant love and watch it grow. In memory of Mrs. Doris. So, yeah. Opportunity there. The importance of what we say to people. Gotta love Mrs. Doris, right? Telling him, be glad. Don't let God hear you. Don't speak that stuff. Be happy for me. I'm going to be free. I'm going to be fine. God's keeping you here because you're not done. Wow, Mrs. Doris on her deathbed, speaking words of love, of light, of truth into somebody else's heart, putting maybe her own potential grief or sadness or worry or fear down so that Danny could have peace in his heart. Wow. Intentional words, intentional language. I love that story. I'm surprised I got through it without crying because I was getting kind of close at the end. And you guys know I'm such a waterhead. Hold on, let me shut the door. Oh. As the kids are playing, if they start running in and out, it's going to sound like a freight train running through the house. So, um, but yeah, yes, that is my dog. My dog was on the bed behind me. Is he still there? Yep. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, wait, your comment's blocking him. There he is. You see him? That's Dave the dog. He's a pointador, which is a Labrador pointer mix. And he goes wherever I go. He has separation anxiety. Literally, I can't leave him for even five minutes ever anywhere, even in the car. It's bad. 
So, um, but he is a lover. He's perfect in every way other than that. And literally he's glued to my side. So wherever I'm at, he's always there. He's always on the bed when I'm doing these lives too. So <laughs> you can say, hey, Dave, Dave the dog. Oh, Brittany says, wow, that's powerful, isn't it? I mean, that's somebody else's story, you guys. And that's why I come here every day sharing these lessons, these legacies and whatnot with you. These, these stories are what you leave behind. And that now is permanently in writing. You know, Danny's never going to forget that moment. And now so many other people get to share in that too. You know, it's so very, very important for us to share our words and to share them intentionally and properly, but to share our stories with the world, you know? It lets people know that they're not alone and it helps people grow through their situations and circumstances too. You know, there's a really cool book that I read and it was for moms called Don't Hide Your Light Under a Laundry Basket. I just like the sec I just like the title. The book was great too, but don't hide your light under a laundry basket. It's don't hide who you are. Don't hide your stories. Don't hide your trials or tribulations. Don't hide your mountaintop moments. Share that with the world. We need it. I need it. I hope that this makes a difference in your day every time I come on because it is, it's powerful. It's powerful hearing what everybody else is going through and dealing with and surviving and accomplishing, you know, it does nothing but empower other people when you share. So I encourage that. Hey, Lynette, how are you doing? At this table, we sit making it legit because when Lynette hits the show, oh, shh. you know, I had to. <laughs> That's uh, Lynette has her own little song off of our one of our morning shows that we watch with the empowerment duo. So does Brittany. She's got a song, too. So does Yvette. You guys all got songs. But uh, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. So we are talking about lessons that we learned in 2020 and um, legacies for 2021. And one of my biggest lessons I learned this year was how important it is to choose my words wisely. And in doing so, the power in doing that can, can just change a situation like that with a single word, you know. So I picked out just three pieces to read to you guys today that I thought was really it showed how special and important the language was that was used in the story, how important the words that we say are and how they can change anything. There's power, power in our words. So the last one I'm gonna read to you is on page 55 of the book. And it was a letter written to me by a customer of mine at one point. Um, I used to be a bartender and barista at a local coffee shop near me. It's since closed. It was just a single owned thing, not like a chain or anything. It wasn't a Starbucks or anything like that, but I mostly worked at night and did the bar thing. I did, I did mornings on the weekends, but I like the night crowd. So anyways, uh, there's a, we were in a shopping strip with like a Harris Teeter and the UPS store and blah, 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 all these restaurants and stuff. And there was a girl that worked, her name was Kaylin. Uh, she worked just a few doors down at one of our little delis that are in the strip there. And so she would always come and see me, like she would start her shift in the afternoon and she'd come and see me when I'd get in at like two o'clock and get herself a big old coffee. And then we would do trivia nights some nights and she'd come back and do trivia. And she was a high school kid. She's like, I don't even know how many, probably 10 years younger than me. And so I would see her literally every day that I worked and sometimes she'd hang out, sometimes she'd just grab and go, but got to know her. And uh, we, you know, I kind of coached her through some stuff, you know, high school kids stuff and whatnot. And um, for Christmas one year, she gave me this letter as a gift. And this was six years ago, maybe, if I had to guess, six probably six, seven years ago. And I still have this letter and it meant so much to me that I put it in the book. So um, it was one of the best Christmas gifts I've ever gotten. And I loved her words and I especially loved how she ended it. Um, and you'll see why. So this is called Christmas Between Friends and it's written by Kaylin. And it was a letter from her to me for Christmas. Dear friend, 
I kept it anonymous in the book, you know what I mean? But I'm telling you guys who are watching the real people involved here. <laughs> but uh, dear friend, or me, dear Melissa, you are so special to me. I wasn't sure what to get you for Christmas, so I decided to write you a letter on my typewriter instead. I wanted to tell you that your friendship has meant everything to me and how much I love you. <sighs> you were the person that made our corner cafe my home. You were so welcoming when I first started frequenting the coffee shop and you made me feel like a part of your family. You are so indispensable to me and I need you to know how much you have influenced my life. See, I didn't even know I needed to read this today, but I apparently did. Um, this one's going to get me worked up. Um, I try to always be the person that would make you proud of me. I know you see me as an older version of your daughter, and that is such a high compliment that I try my best to live up to it. I have never felt as immensely or immediately accepted by someone as I have by you. You take me with all my faults and love me so fully. I cannot express how much that means to me. You met me at a time in life when I was just learning to accept and love myself. Your unconditional love did more for me at that time than you will ever know. Thank you so much for that. Every time I see you, there is a smile on your face and a warm hug waiting for me. You tell the greatest stories and you're always ready to help others in any way you can. You are such a beautiful woman. You have so many hidden talents and skills. The fact that you offered to color my hair for free absolutely blew me away. She used to color her hair pink, purple, blue, and she has some thick hair, like thick. We get three bottles of hair color on this lady. There this girl, this kid, I'm telling you. She's in, like in her teens. She was in high school, you know? Um, she said that blew me away. I have a lot of hair. You had no idea how long it would take, but you were totally cool with hanging out for the duration of the process. Not once, not twice, but several times. You are the best. It would take us hours to do her hair, too. She said, to me, you are a second mom. Oh, this is one of the best letters I've ever gotten, I swear. I come to you when I need advice or a sympathetic ear. You are a great listener. I think that's my favorite thing about you. You also make a mean coffee, which I did and still do. <laughs> Wherever you are, you light up the room. The warmth you give off with your personality makes everyone feel so safe and accepted. It's my favorite part here. If you were a pastry, just the words here. If you were a pastry, you would be a warm, steaming cinnamon bun. You are too good for this world, too pure. I love you and Merry Christmas. Kayla. I love that Cinnabon thing. I swear to God for years, every time I see or hear or smell the Cinnabon, I think of her and I think of this letter. And your words are such a blessing to people. In the beginning, she said she didn't know what she wanted to get me for Christmas, but she took the time to write that letter, probably not expecting me to put it in a book or keep it in my underwear drawer and read it year after year after year after year and share it with the world. Words, words can be such a blessing. What's, what's, the, what's the phrase? The power of life and death is in the tongue, right? Uh, let's see, Kia, this totally describes you. <laughs> Nah, do I, do I remind you of Cinnabons? <laughs> That's a good thing. I mean, goodness. If you're going to be compared to a food, I'll take a Cinnabon over like a turkey or something any day. Um, but yeah, power of life and death is in the tongue. You know, all of those things I just read to you were all uplifting and full of love and full of light. And just on the on the flip side of it, when we're throwing words around carelessly without taking the time to read those definitions and understand if there's multiple definitions and how it may or may not be received from some by somebody, um, if we're not taking the time to do that, you know, on the flip side, you're gonna be breaking some stuff, breaking some hearts and maybe adding fuel to fire fire to the fuel to the fire and stuff like that. You know, we could be doing damage 
So I don't know this year and all of these opportunities I've had to like watch William Brown and his show, the one word conversations be part of it. It really has done a number on my life. It's, it's given me this beautiful lesson, which I love words so much. I love to write. I love poetry. I love speaking. You guys know, I love to talk. I love to listen. Words are my thing, you know, but apparently I was missing out on this whole whole worlds, whole powerful world of words, the, the underlyings of them, you know, and the fact that they do have different meanings. So we just need to be very intentional. That's going to be my goal. That's what I've learned this year. And that's really what I want to carry on into 2021 and teach my kids, especially to be very mindful of every little word that comes out of your mouth and be sure to choose words that bring love and light and life into this world. You know, I'm not saying don't say anything bad. Like if you went through a bad experience or something, share it, you know, but let's be mindful. Like Brittany, you're really good at this. If you're still watching, um, like the positive speak, you know, some of the time, some, sometimes we say things and we don't mean them to be negative, but it's like, you could flip that around and say something slightly different to give that positive connotation to it. You know, words come with feelings too. They come with stories, they come with experiences, they come with feelings. So it's it's beyond what the word actually means in the Webster's Dictionary. It's what does it mean according to what you've lived? What does it mean to the person that you're speaking to? You have to be mindful of that stuff. So that's just something, it was a huge doorway that I got to walk into this year and I'm so blessed to have been able to. And gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful lesson to learn for this 2020. And yeah, I embrace it. So a big shout out and thank you again to William Brown and everything he's doing as well. You guys, please look up Disconnect to Connect uh, One Word Conversations on YouTube. You can check out our episode from today um, and all of the other ones. And the same for me, Lessons and Legacies is also on YouTube now. This is uh, episode 16, technically 18. We're calling it 16. I had a couple ha half episode bonus bonuses in there, but... All right, Yvette says, next month in 2021, I hope I be live to show my 1044 Pro, 1044 Pro Bar peanut butter bar from Wanda D. Hollis. Well, I'll be looking forward to that. Tag me in on that live. Brittany, I want to get on on your lives too. I can't wait. I'm going to watch your video this afternoon too. As soon as I'm done with this, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk the dog and then I'm going to watch your show and probably look for a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my mission for the rest of the day. So I hope um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and a good brand, rounding out of the year. I have my sight set high for 2021. I have my ambition up. I have my faith on full steam ahead with faith and just knowing that it's going to be all right. Things are going to shift this year. Will will be prosperous, I think, for all of us. We will bounce back from this. Why? Because we are resilient by nature and born to survive apart or together. We can overcome and rise. That's out of my resilience chapter. We are built and born resilient. We will bounce back from this. So there have been many blessings in 2020. And I always say there is a blessing in every lesson. And I think we had a lot of both this year. So if you guys are interested in coming on and being part of my show, I would love to have you. You do not have to be somebody that contributed to the book. It can just be if you want to come and share your lessons, your legacy, or talk about um, the chapters of my book, our love, faith, laughter, resilience, and success. So if you want to come and share anything in any of those kind of categories, you're more than welcome. You can contact me at uh, just Melissa Price, either on Facebook, you can message me there. Or you can email me at lessonsandlegacies at gmail.com. That's scrolling on the screen right now. Um, and we'll set you up. I'm on Monday through Friday at 2 o'clock and anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour or so. And if you'd love to be a part of the show, I would love to have you. You can bring your products. You can bring your books, bring your art. If you're a singer or a musician or, you know, bring the laughs, whatever. Bring it. I'm happy. Happy to have you. So. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, don't forget to like, comment, 
share, hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. I would appreciate you. Sharing is caring. And uh, yeah, I love you guys very much. I will be back at, oh wait, here's Precious. Precious is in. She says, in 2021, I plan to make my abracadabra moments. Just in 2021. You've been making abracadabra moments all year, queen. And you've been helping us to make our abracadabra moments too. So for that, I thank you always. My sister, my soul doctor, and my friend, Precious Paul. And you'll see her Monday at 2 o'clock. Precious, if you're if you're free on uh, New Year's Eve, if you want to do like a little New Year's Eve something, let me know. Shoot me a message or a text or whatever after. I'd love to do some kind of New Year's Eve special with you if you're free. If not, I might drag my husband on. I don't know. He's not. He's not. It's not been a happy camper these days, though. So maybe, maybe I'll roll solo if Precious doesn't want to do it. But <laughs> if you do, just shoot me a message. I'll reach out to you here in a bit. But anyways, remember to choose your words wisely. There's power of life and death in the tongue. Be intentional about what you say. Speak love, speak life, speak light. Remember, there's a blessing in every lesson and sharing your story that's what you leave behind. That's what you leave behind for the world to grow from and for the world to glow from. Okay. I love you guys. Be blessed. And uh, we'll see you at two o'clock tomorrow. <laughs>